Hi everyone, Paul Schmutzler here with a new tutorial for you today for After Effects. This tutorial will introduce you to what you might call a plugin called Photomotion. Photomotion is available for download and purchase through the Envato market. If you've never used Envato, Envato has several different libraries that you can choose stock footage from, stock images, stock music, and they also have a library of motion graphics, templates, and tutorials. And this is one of those that you can purchase on the Envato market. Photomotion comes from Integnity, which is a British company. Photomotion would loosely be described as a plugin for After Effects, but it's really an entire project that's specifically designed to be able to lead you through some really complex and great looking animation and compositing. Integnity just recently released version 2.0, and that's what you're looking at on my screen right now. You can see that they now have two modes. If we go into Start, there's Photomotion Speed and Photomotion Pro. The differences are pretty significant. Photomotion Speed is meant for users without a ton of experience. It makes it really easy to do some simple, quick animations to your photos. And Photomotion Pro enables you to use all of the bells and whistles of Photomotion, including 3D projection and lots of additional animation, including 3D text and other 3D elements that you can layer in with your photos. Now I'm going to show you a quick demo here from Integnity to give you an idea of what Photomotion can do, and then we're going to walk through a real quick project that I've put together for this. So that demo gives you a good idea of what Photomotion is capable of. Now any of you that are After Effects experts are looking at that and saying, wow, that looks really nice, but I can already do that. Why would I buy Photomotion? Well, if you're saying that, Photomotion might not necessarily help you a lot, except it may make things a little faster for you. But if you're like me and compositing and 2D animation is a little bit of a, is kind of your weak spot, then this is really going to help you make some fascinating animations much more easily than you could by going online, finding a tutorial, and figuring out how to do every little step of it yourself in After Effects and teaching yourself along the way. So you might call it a crutch. I call it just a way to get things done faster and much more easily. So I actually used Photomotion Pro for this project because some of the effects I wanted to do just weren't as easy to access through the speed version. So I'm gonna jump into Photomotion here. And basically every time you click one of those things, you're opening a com composition in After Effects. They're already built here. You can see on the left, there is all the different files that are built into Photomotion in these folders. But all you need to do is follow what's on screen in your composition window. We'll add the photo first. And you can see it's very simple. It tells you everything to do. Right here on the screen, you can see add your image here. And then down below, it tells you to add your image above this layer. And then it also says to shift parent here. And the idea behind that is we're going to use the parent button here and drag it to this layer from our image while holding the shift button. Before I do that, I want to show you how I set up the photo in Photoshop. This is an image I took a few years ago off one of the barrier islands on the Georgia coast. It's an egret just launching out of these shallow waters into the air. I love the timing of it. I uh, love the beautiful white feathers and just seeing him just launch out of the water and um, just a beautiful creature. So what I did was I wanted to make this bird look like he's actually a separate element in the scene and be able to move him. This is just a still image off my DSLR, but we can make him look like he's more alive than this. So I built a mask around him and that was simply by making a selection and then turning that into a mask. You can see my selection here by command clicking on a Mac on the layer and there's my selection, and then my mask is right here adjacent to it, and you can see the white is showing where the mask is. So what I did was I used that as a layer, and then in photo motion, we'll go back there now. So let's import our image into the files. And 
for this image, we are going to import this as the whole thing together. We're not going to choose just a layer, we're going to merge all the layers. So there's our egret image, and we're going to drag that onto here, right where, right where it says to, in between these layers, and then I will hold shift and parent this to the layer above. And what that will do is tie everything I do to this layer to the egret PSD layer. So now if I scale this, it's going to scale that layer below it. So I think 115% should do it so we're not losing anything left and right and getting letterboxing. Now we'll go back to projection setup. The next thing I want to do is add my mask. So we'll click once on mask settings and that will bring up all the settings for the mask. How about that? On the left here. Now this is a little overwhelming, but bear with me. Basically, all we want to do is enable mask number one, because we don't have more than one mask in this image. So click the checkbox. Nothing is necessarily going to change, except you see now there's the mask layer in your projection. We'll come back there. Let's go back to masks for now. You can see now, look, there's a pink box next to here, which shows you that it's enabled. So I'll click twice again, and I'm going to add the mask. Now here's where you could create your mask in After Effects, but since I've created one in Photoshop, I'm going to import that. So double click here. I will import the egret image again, but this time I'm going to choose a specific layer. Layer one is that what has the mask on it. So I'm going to leave that, click OK. You can see there's the mask right there. So my mask is now imported. I'll go back here and I will import the image to this mask, which again is the same thing. And again, you have to shift parent to the layer above it. This is simply what enables photo motion to kind of take charge of the imagery that you're adding into this. Now you can see that my mask shows as pink and we've got the green light on both of these boxes here. These correspond to the blue boxes on the left. So now we know we've done it right. So let's go back to our projection setup. Now we can adjust the depth. You can see our egret now shows up as pink. Now we're going to add what will really give us the depth of field or the tunneling in the image in the final animation. So I'm going to go to Cage Settings, click back over to my Effect Controls. Now here's where you can start to go wild. You can change the width of your cage and the height. And then of course you can adjust where it is up and down. And I'm going to try to put it around the bird basically. And then I'm gonna bring the mask closer by going here and adjusting the mask settings. I'm gonna to go to, let's try 800. Okay, so that gives a separation between the green box, which is essentially the, the end of the tunnel or the back of your projection, the pink box being the mask. So the mask is now closer than the back of uh, than the image on the background. Now the last thing you want to do is because I want to actually move this thing side to side and have the bird reveal what's behind it. Of course if it's a flat image all you're gonna see is black or white or nothing. So we have to add what's called a clean plate. The clean plate is something I also created in Photoshop. So I'm gonna switch back over there real quick and show you how that works because it's a really cool process and really shows off how well Photoshop complements After Effects when it comes to compositing. So I've turned off the egret layer that's already clipped out just to show you what it looked like when I initially made the selection. So we've got a hole that we have to fill. There are several ways to do it, but what I did was I kept the selection and then I expanded it just a little bit. So go to Select, Modify, Expand, and just a couple of pixels is all you need. I chose, I chose five click OK, and you can see it just went out into the color again. Now we don't have to worry about all this ridiculous detail and the waves and then the trees and beach in the background because Photoshop with their amazing content aware fill is going to take care of that for us. So go to edit fill and then under the fill options just choose content aware and that uses an algorithm to determine the surrounding pixels recreates them as best it can, and voila, you have what could pass as pretty much a perfect fill, way better than me trying to use the clone stamp for a couple of days. 
And then when I turn the bird back on, there he is in all his glory, right on top of that clean background. So now we're gonna go back to After Effects and import this clean plate. You can see here that Photomotion has a built-in way of creating its own background if you don't wanna import a clean plate. It's only gonna work for really clean, simple images. So solid color backgrounds, or maybe even a repeating pattern, but in general, you're not gonna be able to use that on any decent photo. So you're gonna to wanna to create that clean plate yourself. You click, double click here to add the custom clean plate, and we're going through the same process we've been doing with other things. Import the image, and this time we're gonna choose that background layer. Background copy is what we want, and then click OK. There you can see the clean plate, there's no bird. Drag it down here again, shift and parent it to the layer where it says to. And then you can now go back to clean plate and see, voila, custom clean plate. It sees it's activated. You can see it in place here. Go back to your projection setup. All right, so we've got everything set for how we want our projection set up. Now we go to animate things. The main thing you'll want to change in your animation is going to be your camera, at least for my image here. So single click on camera animation and you can see your effects come up here. There's many things you can do to it. Um, we're gonna keep this pretty simple, but you can affect the in and out, which of course is gonna be a huge thing because that really shows the depth off of your image. So you can adjust that as much as you want. And you can see our bird is moving with it right now. We'll get to that in a second. I'll make it move a little to the side. And then I can also rotate just slightly. So I've made a few adjustments to the camera animation, nothing too major. The other thing you can change is the camera focus, which includes depth of field. You can even turn on the distances so you can actually see what the distance is between your masks if you have multiple objects in there. It gets really interesting when you get to the compositing settings because this is where things like blurring the background or blurring your foreground really makes these animations look realistic. I'm actually gonna scale the background in the negative because I wanna give the appearance that this bird is flying out of the image. Now, if, if I had thought through this a little more carefully, I could have taken this into Photoshop, made the image smaller, and actually created more background to this image so that I could zoom out even farther and actually look like I'm revealing more of the ocean. Most of the settings in the animation are already turned on for keyframing automatically, but some like the composition settings you have to turn on when you make those changes. I've not turned those on yet, so this is still my initial animation. I want this to be about five seconds long, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead to the five second mark on my timeline, turn on the keyframing for these couple of things, and then start animating. Another thing I can do here is add a little bit of blur to the edge of my mask. In this case, I don't think that really works for what I'm trying to accomplish here, but I'll turn it on a little bit just so you can see what it looks like. So now the feathers and the legs are all actually being pulled in from the edge. Um, I could use that a little bit here if I created a mask just for the feathers, because it could give a little bit of a blur as if the feathers are moving on the, at the tips there, and maybe even the legs just slightly. But in this case, I don't want that, so I'm gonna reset that. Now, if you've ever used puppet controls to maybe do a cartoon or something where you're moving um, particular pieces of an object on screen, then you're going to be happy to find that those are fully supported in Photomotion. So double-clicking on additional animations gives you the ability to use displacement maps and the puppet tool. Double-clicking on the puppet tool enables you to use that. I'm going to put a pin here on the end of this feather and the end of this feather. Now it appears when I move these puppet pins around that the whole image is moving. Don't worry about that. You can see it's masked off. It shows you the background, but it's actually only moving that object on the mask. So going back to animation, we should be able to see now how that animation affected everything. So if you see the bird has moved to a different position now, and if I scroll to my five second mark, you can see now that he rotates on the image. The next step allows you to add a whole lot of other effects that I won't get into, but there are motion transitions that are built-in alpha channels with all kinds of cool geometric shapes. There's light transitions as well as light leaks and optical flares. Uh, you can add all kinds of 3D text, particles that are already built for you like snow and rain, digital glitches for some crazy effects. 
and then a logo reveal with all kinds of great depth of field and moving effects for bringing in a logo to brand your videos. And of course color corrections with some built-in uh, different grades that you can use on your final image. The last step is simply to render out the project and it tells you where to go to find it. It says open the folder called O2 Render. Since we're using Pro, we go to the Pro folder, keep going down into the subfolders until you find our scene one, which is shown here on all the different compositions we're using. We use the 16 by nine format. There's our render right there. And you simply add that to your render queue, change your settings and render it out. And what you get should look something kind of like this. So that is just scratching the surface of what Photomotion can do for your After Effects projects and compositing. Check them out on the Envato market at envato.com.